there's an adage that applies to the new car industry that essentially suggests that when all's said and done here in the 21st century, no one really makes a bad car anymore. This is the Renault Duster. Interesting name, isn't it? And if it seems somewhat familiar to you, you might recognise the second part of that name, Duster. In the UK, in Europe, it's actually the Dacia Duster. Dacia being a Romanian car company that has been under the Nissan Renault umbrella for many, many years now. In fact, Dacia were making badged Renaults back in the, uh, the 1960s and 70s. Now when the Dacia Duster, as it's known in Europe and the UK, was first announced, it kind of caused a bit of a stir, especially among weird masochistic motoring journalists who like their fast cars and their supercars, but also sometimes like really, really basic cars as well. Now the Dacia Duster was marketed on the premise that it was absolutely Billy Basics. Steel wheels, wind up windows, you know, air conditioning as an option, that kind of thing, for a price, you know, 10,000 UK pounds, um, for example, for, for a Billy Basics one. You can get other, other versions. But the idea being that this was a rough, tough, go anywhere kind of vehicle that had so few moving parts in it that it didn't really matter if you accidentally backed into a tree stump. And so when the news came that Renault New Zealand were bringing in a duster of their own, well, that really intrigued me, it intrigued a lot of people. In fact, it was quite exciting because the last time New Zealand had what could be put alongside a, a basic duster would be something like a Lada Neva. Now, a joke once, actually highly sought after now, and, and not many of them left either. So, the idea of a, of a, of a very, very basic um, duster really did appeal. Thing is of course that we don't have Dacia here, there's no point trying to market that brand. It's very, very uh, loosely known through motoring media channels but it's not something you're going to score many points with in terms of um, market share in the New Zealand landscape. And Dacia being part of the Renault-Nissan alliance, uh, it became pretty obvious that if they're going to bring that vehicle here, it's going to have a Renault badge on the nose, as this one I'm driving does. And the badge on the grill and the sticker price in the window for this particular vehicle is where things start to go a bit awry for the Duster in New Zealand, I think. This Duster has an introductory price of $27,990. So that kind of pushes it up into Mitsubishi ASX territory. Or, again, a left field option, Sangyong Tivoli territory. Cars that, again, with the Mitsubishi have kind of cemented themselves in the marketplace as mass market uh, appeal sort of vehicles. That's not the end of the story though because that's an introductory price for this vehicle. In, I presume, a few months time, the Renault Duster will cost you $29,990 if you don't get your $500 deposit in Sharpish. And when this car costs $29,990, this vehicle, the one spec that's available in New Zealand, will be up against things like the Kia Seltos. And that's a problem, because the Kia Seltos is a very, very good vehicle. And that's the thing, panache or refinement, that's what's kind of lacking in this Renault, it's, uh, it's sort of hard plastics and very sort of basic fit and finish. It's not badly done, there's just nothing here. Uh, apart from the screen, that's about sort of all you sort of feel you're getting in the way of technology. And then it comes to the drive. You've got this CVT gearbox, which is just, oh, it's just, 
trashy around town. You sort of put your foot down, there's more noise, but nothing's necessarily improving in terms of your pace or your, you know, your movement forward. It's just all, it's like a hair dryer that's about to blow up or something. And it's actually quite sort of slow off the mark. I've had a couple of occasions where I've been coming out of an intersection and there's that sort of bottom clenching moment where you realise that the car you're in isn't possibly going to get you into the lane you need to be in in time before the car that's coming towards you gets to you. Uh, it's not really a, a car that makes you want to drive it. Can I say anything good about this car? A little bit, a little bit. Okay, I've thrashed the reputation of this little duster. It's just trying its hardest. And I've said enough mean things about it. What, what do I like about it? Well, as I said before, I do like this screen. This touch screen's really nice. I really like the manual uh, air conditioning system as well. I'm actually a real advocate for manual, manual air conditioning systems. I'm sick of haptic controllers and touchscreen uh, temperature settings on some of the more executive fare that you see these days. It's all very clever, but when you're sort of negotiating traffic or you're on a back road and all of a sudden you're, you're feeling like you need some cool air and you're, you're trying to scroll through systems just to get the blooming vents blasting at you, I mean, that's dangerous. I just like this system, three dials. You know, where do you want the air directed, how fast do you want the fan speed and what temperature do you want it? Perfect, love that. The car actually feels like it's got a fair bit of space as well. Um, it's a mid-size SUV, again it's kind of line ball with your Mazda CX-3s or your Kia Seltos's in terms of its um, uh, sizing, its dimensions. It's got a decent sized boot, the driving position's really quite comfortable. In terms of actually sitting in it and getting out at your destination, uh, it's fine. Again though, it's that weird sort of thrashy engine noise that kind of just saps your will to live when you are driving it, which is a shame, because it's actually a perfectly comfortable cabin. It's a well-known fact, we Kiwis love our shiny baubles and displays and things, and. Renault New Zealand has obviously delivered on that. This car has a nice little touch screen. It's not the biggest one in the world, but it's very functional. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are standard. Reversing camera. In fact, this car has a really good reversing camera or camera system. It's got four different views around the vehicle. Uh, it's got blind spot warning. Um, it's got roof bars. It's got alloy wheels. It's got various bits and pieces that you'd hope a $29,990 vehicle would have. The thing is though, the Kia Seltos and the Mitsubishi ASX and the Suzuki Vitara, they've all got that stuff as well. And they sort of do all that stuff with a bit more panache. I think with the right sticker price in the window and the right specification inside and around it, the Renault Duster could still, even here in New Zealand, represent the sort of knockabout, rugged, value for money proposition that this car was built around in its home market. But because you have to have a certain level of specification for New Zealand and you have to ask a certain amount of money for that specification, we're never really going to see the Duster in its purest form perhaps. And as a result, this Renault Duster, admittedly, as much as it has in it, it's really pushing to get to that level, the level where its rivals are at. And those rivals effortlessly meet the same specification level. And they meet it for a really, really effective price, a compelling price, and they've got room to move above. It's just such a crowded marketplace, so I don't think that the Dacia, the Dacia see, I'm doing it again, the Renault Duster, I don't think it stands much of a chance. I'm willing to be proven wrong, but from what I've seen here, I just don't think it does. And in fact, I'll, I'll end this episode with another adage. I'm not mad, 
I'm just disappointed. My level of dissatisfaction with this car has nothing to do with the fact I just got a $60 parking fine in it either. It's not the car's fault. The car's got many faults, but it's not one of them that I got a $60 parking fine. Maybe I can siphon $60 worth of gas out of the tank to make up for it. Oh, we made it over the hill.